Divergent reactions trail suspension of the acting chairman of Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. And as another regime draws closer for the Nigerian Bar Association, we wonder what would be its role in the national development. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladendi. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. Reactions to the arrest of the acting chairman of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have started rolling in. Some believe the ordeals being experienced by the suspended chairman is as a result of power play, while others, such as former lockmaker Dino Melaye, has applauded the suspension, saying there are more people in the cabinet of the president engaging in treasury looting like the embattled EFCC boss. Meanwhile, human rights lawyer Femi Falano has expressed displeasure, saying that Magus probe is a setback to the Buhari anti-corruption crusade. Joining us to discuss is uh, a legal practitioner, barrister Koladi Olutekumbi. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for having me. And also joining us in this conversation is a journalist. Uh, I also like to refer to him as a politician because he's a member of a political party, Dipo Olayoko. Dipo, you're welcome. Yes, K, how are you? Good evening. Yeah, I'm doing great. Good, good evening. Yes, uh, by way of either order of mention or not. Let me start with you, Dipo. Uh, what's your take about what is going on? A lot of people said that uh, this is about power play and not really about the, the, the hunter becoming the hunted now. Yeah, let me talk to Dipo. Dipo, are, are you there? I look at it. Yes, I can hear you. What's your immediate reaction to what is going on to the suspended EFCC chairman? Well, uh, if you go by the history of EFCC, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Because we have the case of No Fuli Badu. They are one of the poster boys of the Obasanjo administration. And the moment Obasanjo left, they went after him. You know, he will face a lot of humiliation. At the time, there was an attempt on his life. Eventually, he was humbled. He was made out of the... And I think he was demoted. It was the, it was the next government. I think the Northern government that pardoned him and reinstated him before the guy eventually retired. And uh, we have the case of Farida Wasiri. And then he took over the job at a very difficult time. Eventually, he was consumed. He was consumed. Then Ibrahim Lamote came in. Uh, you know what happened to him? He was invited to the assembly. All manner of allegations were against him. That the property that was being seized, he was selling them to his cronies, to the tune of Mayor Chile of Naira. He was removed. And uh, he's back in the force, in the police force. So the case of um, Mamadou should not come as a surprise. That, that is the tradition in the FCC. But the consolation that Nigerians have is that there is a pro panel headed by Justice Salami. And uh, you know Justice Salami has got the need for himself as a man of integrity and a man of honor. And if Nigerians believe that whatever report he filing is going to be the truth and nothing but the truth. But if we go by what those people have done, I think it is safe to conclude that Magu is a gunner. 
Okay, I'll come back to that. Let, let, I was going to ask uh, Mr. Oluta could be on that. Is the jury out because it appears people have lost hope? Because according to the presidency, they've explained to us that this is just to underscore the fact that nobody is above the law. And for you to be investigated, you cannot be in charge of the document, you cannot be in charge of the files and necessary things. So some would say the presidency has done the right thing. But it appears people have concluded that Magu is a gunner. Is that the opinion you share, too? Well, uh, Part of my language let, as the word let, gunner. Let me say, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Uh, we have watched with uh, so much uh, dissolution the ongoing investigation of the acting chairman of uh, ESCC. It is very disheartening for some of us who are taught that this man has achieved so much for the country that this government had had some positive rating in the international community. Now, for me, I believe that what ought to have been done is to try and build the institution and run ESCC. And therefore, if there is any fractions in the persons that is heading that commission, a judicial panel of inquiry would have been more appropriate rather than executive inquiry. You cannot be the accuser and at the same time presiding over what you are accusing him for. Recall that the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation had brought some allegations, some weighty allegations against him. And for me, I do not think it is appropriate that the same uh, office of the attorney general has spend its own power in constituting a panel of inquiry or even being be member of such panels. I do not know those who are members. Everything has been started swiftly, but I believe that what ought to be done is to constitute a judicial panel of inquiry, which will be more or less quasi judicial in their power and in their function. It is time that this country wakes up. In, in, in all the time we get these people who are in the hands of a pair of EFCC, we don't care for enough. So you're going for it. And it's so disheartening. I mean, all the previous chairman, like the first speaker had said, they've all been humiliated out of office. We see that all of them have been wrong. You see, corruption is a very terrible uh, 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 institution. And when it fights back, it's very consuming. And unfortunately, it appears as the government, the president is not in charge in this, man, in this particular matter. Because this particular man has been acting chairman in the last four years. And he just tried the DSSS report about him, which, was, which prevented him from being uh, confirmed by the, uh, the, the Eighth Assembly. He is still continuing in office. So what has gone on between that time and this time? So for me, I believe we've all, uh, we, 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 uh, they should be careful so as not to destroy the only institution that people have come to associate this government with to be fighting for us. Because if you bring man, if you bring this man and you humiliate him out of office, then that shows that everything that has been done so far, you know, they are they, they abound to the purpose. Okay. So, I think we should talk about this. Uh, Mr. Lucha Kubi, let's look at it from this angle. Uh, 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 we're looking at uh, very serious allegations here. We're looking at shouldn't you be above the board looking at the series of allegations? I can understand that it can be very tempting when you are retrieving money, when you are getting all these assets, you're probably tempted. But shouldn't, shouldn't you have counted your cost, looking at my, I mean, pardon my language, before you take this kind of position? And in this case, it's a bit different. The same president that appointed him is the same one allowing whatever is going on with him. Well, for me, I, 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 I believe very strongly that uh, that's why I said EFCC should be an institution to be built around EFCC. Rather than individual. The mode of the modus of this of EFCC are set out according to EFCC Act. And if there's going to be an infraction, 
that infraction should be something that, you know, beyond the fact that uh, an individual could do something out of the scope of his power. It should be within the concept of the institution, the framework that with that uh, institution was set up. Now, the recovering of looted assets, this recovery are not done through Madhu's account. It's done through the institution of government. I am aware. They don't pay directly to the chairman of ESCC, whatever he come It goes to the government uh, treasury. So if they have a problem in reconciliation, I mean, they, this can be properly looked into. You know, my, my only worry is that at the end of the day, if this committee comes out and they say this man has not committed any offense, what is the hula balus that they must that have been blown out now? The office of the attorney general of the federation has cried foul out to the public already, alleging very weighty allegation against him. And that is the supervising ministry of ESCC. So there's a problem. Okay. And that is why I said the, the president should come out and be more in charge of this institution of government. Okay. It is time we begin to see leadership. For me, why should the president and some of the agency under his uh, under his uh, under his uh, 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 supervision be having open crisis? Okay. They uh, always uh, use uh, the power power information. Good good issues we raise. Uh, uh, Mr. Lucha can be a good point you've raised. Let me quickly go back to Dikpo. Dikpo, he has raised something very critical, which we have seen with this current administration. The two agencies in question, talking about the DSS and EFCC, are both agencies of the presidency. What do you think is happening? We know how DSS, you know, or the, there was a security report that didn't allow this man to be confirmed. But it appears Dino Melaye has been proven right because he said, maybe because you feel these people are from opposition, therefore you didn't take their petition or their, their position seriously. And uh, interestingly, Karate, it is the involvement of DSS in this matter that has raised a lot of issues. Hmm. I hope there is a need for us to go back into a, a little bit of history. When some years back, DSS officials invaded the residence of some judges. It was a library, it was a revised reported. And Nigeria started asking the question, what concerns the DSS with the issue of corruption? And they told us that the AGF was the one who sanctioned that invasion. Unfortunately for Marco, he was cornered that one the point where the place where he told them that he does not approve of the action of the AF, of the of the DSS. That was the where the battle line was drawn between him and the AGF Malami, and even the involvement of DSS in this operation. What concerns DSS with the issue of corruption? The president appointed Magu. The president has the right to ask Magu to go on suspension and then ask EFCC or the IC or police to investigate Magu. Why DSS? Why DSS? These are the issues that you are raising. DSS, DSS has a statutory function. It has to do with state security. I said they want to tell us that the uh, money that allegedly stole him, it was money they want to use to destabilize the state. So there is a there is a there is a long history of no love lost between DSS and the and the AFCC, especially on the Marco. Don't forget that in 2016, this same AGF Malami issued Marco with a uh, with a, 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 a like a query. And in December 2016, Marco answered those queries. Interestingly, these are the same issues they have brought up again. The issue of DSS came up. Amaku was telling the AGF that why, why is nobody investigating? On the 20, that is October 3rd, 2016, DSS wrote a letter to the National Assembly that they should not confirm Magu because of certain things they found against him. On the same day, in, a, in another letter, in another letter signed by the same Fraser de Bello, DSS told the National Assembly to confirm Magu. Two letters on the same day from DSS. And nobody investigated that letter. So what are we doing in this country? Nobody is saying Magu is above board. Nobody is saying Magu is not guilty or culpable. But the antecedent to the his event of yesterday and day yesterday okay. has shown that it is premeditated. But it is it. Okay. Don't Let's forget that in the memo Let's wait for the that the ATF sent to the president where he said 
uh, Marco should be suspended. He already submitted names of three people to take over from Marco. Noted. Noted. Let, 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 let's take this conversation to that next level. I will come back to you, Dikpo. Uh, Mr. Luchakubi, let, is it okay to say that um, the issue raised by the eight National Assembly, especially the eight Senate, about this issue that was submitted by the security, it's something to worry about because it appears that's what is playing out now. We're talking about the presidential panel this time around. Yeah, you are, you, are, you are quite correct. You know, you, you, will, you will recall, like as we mentioned earlier, that when you have institution of government, it is expected that this institution of government, yes, they must have a cooperation, especially in the presidential system of government. We have the president who is the appointing authority. And the appointing authority is also the same uh, appointing authority that appoint these two institutions that seem to be in conflict and what do i mean in conflict by making reports that are not that are in contract distinctions now we have a president who simply just keep quiet and allow this institution to bring out the objectively led to the public now the point we are making is that nobody is above the law if Magu has committed infractions against the law since the laws are there to take its course it is the way and oh, manner sorry to, sorry that to this government there. seems is to... Is that not what the president... Uh, Mr. Luchakubi... That becomes a problem to some of us. Mr. Luchakubi, is that not what the yes. presidency has done by saying that I actually belong to no one, I belong to nobody, let the institution take its course? Why should it take side? Why should it... Yes, the, po the, the point is that the president, the president said he belongs to nobody... The president said he told us that he belongs to nobody, but we know he belongs to many bodies. Yeah. That's the point. It is not just uh, he told it. the president said he belongs to nobody, but we know he belongs to some bodies. There are, there are mafias, there are institutions in the presidency that have attacked the leadership of this country. And it is high time the president sit up before they run this country out of its, out of its control. That, 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 that is a very strong allegation, Mr. Luther Kubi. Uh, let me, let no, me quickly... It's, it's, what, it's what we are seeing. It's what we are seeing. I, I wish look you could... Look at the way the chairman of uh, APC, look at the way he was booted out of office. <laughs> what are we witnessing? Okay, let, let me listen to the, uh, deeper on that. Uh, do you share that same opinion? Because as far as the president is concerned, I shouldn't take side. That seems to be the language. They said this is a sign that uh, nobody is above the law. Mr. Dickbo, is there anything wrong with what the president has done? <laughs> nobody is saying the president cannot prove any of his voice. He appointed them. But I think of course believe that some of these things should be done in a more tidy manner. So that you do not give room for speculations and people are beginning to read meaning to it. Especially our worry is the involvement of ATF Malami and the DSS. Don't forget that there is no love lost between ATF Malami and um, uh, the Michael. Malami and DSS on one side. That's why I gave you the example of judges whose citizens were invaded by the military, by the DSS. It just reminds of what happened under the Nuhu Ibashi and Anduaka, where the issue of power plays was at the center point. Eventually, Magu uh, was humiliated out of that office. It was the President Jonathan that saved the guy's career. Now, look at AFCC and DSS. Don't forget, maybe Nigerians have forgotten. Some years back, about two or three years ago, when the issue of uh, the Bodilon Tower, as well as the Ikori Tower, the money that was uh, discovered, the man at the center of it, the former DG of NIA. When EFCC wanted to go and arrest the man, it was the same DSS that stopped EFCC from arresting the man. How can you comprehend that, Mr. Coyote? Somebody was alleged to have stolen or to have been punished about for something million dollars. EFCC, as part of their deal, wanted to go after him. DSS stopped them from arresting him. So, the issue of DSS, uh, the okay. worry of the child is the government of DSS in this operation. Dikwa. What concerns DSS with this operation? Dikwa, if the president is saying that, okay, well, because of Magu, he's the chairman of the FCC, he can suspend Magu. Okay, he has to suspend Magu. 
Okay. Why TSS? Okay, Mr. Layoko. Mr. Mr. Layoko. I may not be able to ask you the last question because of time. And the question I actually want to ask you, you made it in your opening remark. I wanted to ask that should we conclude that Magu is out? Because according to the presidency, this is a case of let investigation be tidy. You cannot be in office while you're being investigated. Can you still have, do you still insist that Magu is gone? You have 10 seconds to please help me out with your final submission. Is it for me, Harry? Yes. Okay. Uh, without any fear of uh, contradiction, without uh, I, I think it's safe to conclude that Magu is gone. Thank you. Because don't forget that in the memo that uh, the AGF wrote to the president, like a petition to against uh, Magu, he has already suggested names of people that he take over from him. Okay. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> so you so Thank you so much. Thank you, Dipo Alayoku. Let me quickly get. Let me. Let me and listen to a lawyer, whether my, a lawyer... What he <laughs> is that, what are we doing to the spirit of those who want to fight corruption? Because mm -hmm. if we did it to Mugu Ripadu, we are not doing it to Magu. Then if, if anybody comes there to come at the uh, appointed as my uh, chairman of PFCC. Okay. Uh, 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 it's, it's safe to say that uh, we know what your position is, and thank you so much, Dipo Layoko. But quickly, let me have your final take, uh, Mr. Olutekubi. Do you believe, because you always tell us as lawyers that until proven gu guilty, the person is innocent? Well, for, we, 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 for me, for me we, we wait and see. We wait and see what the outcome of the Justice Salami inquiry will come up with. We wait and see. I have a tremendous respect for Honorable Justice Salami. And I know that he's, he's an impartial judge. I believe those, the facts will be presented as they were, and they will have, uh, they, they will have uh, a, a, a very good proof of whatever allegation they must have levied against him. But let me say very quickly that we, be, we must begin to give some, a, a little degree of respect and honor so those that we have given responsibility to in this country, we should stop humiliating them. Otherwise, we will not get people to take offices in future. Thank you very much. Enough. Thank you very much. You've raised a very, very valid point, and it is noted, and we believe that those in authority will consider this position you've taken. Thank you once again, Barrister Kolade Olutekubi. And also, thank you for having me. for your intervention on this matter. And to our viewers, we want to appreciate you, but we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be discussing how the Nigerian Bar Association can help in nations' development. We'll be right back.